coming up on Mountain News this morning, some of the Republican candidates aiming to beat Governor Andy Bashir in the next election gather to take part in their first debate. And people needing to see a dentist here in Kentucky notice longer wait times as they try to schedule their appointments. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News This Morning. 601, good morning to you. I'm Dakota Makris. It is Wednesday. We almost made it to the end of, end of the week. Thanks so much for waking up with us. Let's take it over to Brandon for a look at that forecast. Brandon, I don't know why I'm always so excited on a Wednesday to get through the week. I mean, why don't I just take life one day at a time? I don't know. Listen, because it's hump day. It is. You're basically up here, then we're starting yep. down. Yeah. See, Thursday, today. Thursday's a tease. You know, it's just like, why is Thursday even a, a day? You know what I mean? Because it's Friday Eve. That's true. Come but on, we man. dare don't say Saturday Eve around here. We dare don't say that. See, got you, didn't I? <laughs> anyway, let's talk about the forecast this morning. There's only one Eve during the regular week, and it's Friday Eve. All right, let's talk about the forecast this morning. We'll take you down to Lake Cumberland, and it's pretty calm down there to start the day. A little bit of sunlight trying to feel, filter into the sky this morning. The clouds have not completely moved back in just yet. It's going to be a beautiful start to the day, but it's a cold start to the day. We're looking at temperatures now down to 28. Logan and Pikeville this morning still falling in those eastern counties. You might, you can kind of tell where the clouds probably are and the clouds probably are not this morning. Probably more out to the west, back out toward Lake Cumberland and I-75 and less in the eastern counties there because they're a little colder. So again, the coldest spots along the Kentucky, Virginia and West Virginia borders, the warmest spots out toward the west, Lake Cumberland, west of I-75. Little extra on the coffee meter to max when we needed this morning as you head out door to depending on where you are in the next dozen hours. If you're grabbing a donut or a bagel or something round to eat as you're heading out the door this morning, you're going to be seeing temperatures that slowly climb, but not a lot because I think we'll see more clouds by this afternoon. That's going to limit our warming factor with not much sunshine. Dakota. All right, Brendan, thank you. In Frankfurt, these so-called shell bills or mule bills started being stuffed with details yesterday. Those are the bills that are filled with few details, only to have them change before they are presented. One that is getting a lot of attention was filed by Republican State Representative Savannah Maddox that would not allow public colleges and universities to ban guns on their campus. Grayson Passmore found out what some students and campus police, police chiefs think about the bill. It's currently forbidden. But under a new proposal, anyone over the age of 21 would be allowed to carry a gun on a college and university campus in Kentucky. Banning firearms on campus is clearly not a deterrent for those who would willingly harm others, yet it ensures that innocent victims are defenseless in the face of the unthinkable. Republican Representative Savannah Maddox presented this version of House Bill 542 to the House Committee on Veterans Military Affairs and Public Protection Tuesday morning, where it passed along party lines. As Maddox explains, the bill would not allow public colleges and universities to ban guns on their campuses. Maddox citing the Michigan State University shooting as one reason to lift the ban on guns. Three weeks ago, three students were killed and five others were injured when a gunman opened fire on campus. Can you imagine if, if one of your children or somebody that you love was on a campus and they got that text message saying to run, hide, or fight? But it's impossible to fight when your own institution of higher learning has rendered you utterly defenseless. But students here on UK's campus say they think the potential legislation is worrisome and almost scary. I mean, people get drunk on campus all the time. It, in the dorms across from me, people get drunk. So if you have a gun mixed in with that, like people make silly decisions and silly decisions with something that can take someone's life is a terrible decision. Publicly opposing the bill, a UK spokesperson said in a statement, quote, our law enforcement, safety and health officials are unequivocal in their belief that allowing guns on campus will make our community less safe. Like legislators are doing is just doing like hot topics and guns are a really hot topic. So I don't know, they want to be popular, I guess, but I kind of don't want to die. That was Grayson Passmore reporting. The attorney for the Council on Post-Secondary Education says college presidents and campus police chiefs oppose the bill and have made the choice to be gun-free zones. The bill was sent to the House floor for a vote. 
Well, gambling issues are coming up in this last full week of the legislative session. A committee will hear a proposal to legalize sports betting today and passed the House last year and died in the Senate. A bill that would address so-called gray machines that have been popping up around the state could get consideration after being blocked last week. And four of the 12 Republicans that want to be Kentucky's next governor participated in the first debate of the primary season last night. The debate was hosted by the Jefferson County Republican Party and aired by Spectrum News One. It featured Attorney General Daniel Cameron and Agriculture Commissioner Ryan Quarles, Auditor Mike Harmon and Somerset Mayor Alan Keck. Former UN Ambassador Kelly Knight Craft declined to participate but says she will do others closer to the May 16th election. The debate covered a variety of hot topics, including medical marijuana, abortion, gun violence, sports betting, and transgender youth. On many issues, the candidates agreed with each other. Kentucky Democratic Party Chair Coleman Eldridge said the clear winner of the debate was Governor Andy Bashir, who's running for re-election. He said, quote, we heard a lot of noise and not a lot of substance. Well, getting an appointment with your dentist can often take months, and if you have to reschedule an appointment, well, it can be hard to get worked in without having to wait a long period of time. That problem is happening across the country and even right here in eastern Kentucky. Our Olivia Calfee talked with the dentist about the problems they are seeing. A CDC report from 2020 says in the U.S., the average was 61.04 dentists per 100,000 resident population. But the state of Kentucky sat slightly lower than the national average at 54.92 dentists per 100,000 resident population. We um, stay booked three months in advance, so uh, it's definitely an issue. Greg Baker, a dentist at Primary Care Centers of Eastern Kentucky, says they have been trying to hire a fourth dentist at their office for more than two years. We just don't have enough dentists to provide the services that are needed. Um, people have to wait two or three months to get in to see a dentist. You know, they suffer uh, with pain um, and discomfort. But Baker says sometimes people can't wait two or three months. They need their office's help immediately. Anytime someone has an emergency and they have pain, uh, I work them in, uh, even if I have to stay late. Adding the need for help is great, but it's hard to encourage dentists that are not from the area to move to Eastern Kentucky. It's not a bad area, uh, but if you're not from here and you're not accustomed to the ways of the community, uh, it's hard to get dentists from like bigger cities to come back because it's such a, a big change for them. Although he says the future of dentistry looks just as bright here in Eastern Kentucky as it does in those attractive big cities. The future of dentistry looks bright, especially with all the new technology uh, that wasn't available to us in the past. So, you know, um, and it's everywhere. Technology can be here, it can be in the bigger cities. So, you know, you don't have to go to Lexington to have your teeth worked on. That was Olivia Coffey reporting, and she also reached out to dental organizations at the state level about the issues here in Kentucky. We're still waiting to hear back on what they are doing to assist in this issue. Well, the groundbreaking ceremony for the new Johnson Central High School brought state leaders to Paintsville yesterday to celebrate the progress. The new high school is expected to be under construction in a little less than two years. Bringing, uh, to bringing to life a long discussed vision for Johnson County students. The school will include many updated and innovative spaces, as well as a career and technology center to dive into the school's pathways. We pride ourselves on, on providing opportunities for every student, no matter what their career pathway may be. And we have done that for so many years at John Central High School. Our building, current building is 54 years old. Well, Governor Andy Bashir says it is nice to see the region making a name for itself with opportunities like this, forming a prepared workforce through education. Well, thrift shopping has grown in popularity during the last several years, prompting many people to forego fast fashion for more sustainable options. And two Kentucky organizations are using this concept to challenge Kentucky's youth to create their own one-of-a-kind items through secondhand clothing. Our Alyssa Williams has the story. 
Five years ago, Kentucky 4-H and Goodwill Industries of Kentucky joined forces to create the Goodwill Meets 4-H Challenge, inspiring 8th grade through 12th grade students to get creative through upcycling. And any participant who signs up, we give them a $20 Goodwill gift certificate and they can go into any of our 67 participating locations in Kentucky and they find items at their local Goodwill store and then they use their sewing skills and their creativity to transform those items into something else. Before and after photos of the items are then posted to social media where the public will vote. The person with the most votes can win various prizes. We try to provide opportunities to our kids and our youth that we deal with uh, that they might not have anywhere else. Uh, and uh, so I, I really feel that uh, providing this uh, opportunity to them, you know, might spark the interest that they realize, you know, I really like uh, to, uh, uh, to work with, with clothes or design. Those with Goodwill Industries of Kentucky say although their main mission is providing opportunities to those with employment barriers, they are happy to teach Kentucky's youth about sustainability as well. Oh, it's really cool that we get to teach students um, about the secondhand shopping, eliminating that cycle of fast fashion, and teaching them about the environment. Challenging the youth of Kentucky to practice sustainability through upcycling. Alyssa Williams, WYMT Mountain News. Well, although registration for the Goodwill Meets 4-H Challenge has expired, you can be on the lookout for the top contenders on Goodwill Kentucky's social media pages. The students who win the challenge will receive a $100 Goodwill gift certificate and free registration for the 4-H Teen Conference this summer. Coming up on 613 here on this Wednesday morning, we continue to track some chilly temperatures out there across our region. We head back to Pikeville for the US 119, US 23 intersection shot there near Pikeville Commons overlooking the uh, Big Sandy River there. We continue to see again the uh, forecast looking a little bit calm out there this morning, but again, clouds will start to increase. It is chilly. 28 Pikeville, 28 Clintwood, 28 Logan, 29 Ashland and Prestonsburg, now 26 in Grundy, but still hanging on to 40 there in Monticello other, on the other end of the scale there this morning. And we're going to head up today about 48 because the clouds are going to move in. It's going to limit it or it's going to limit our potential for warmth a little bit later on this afternoon. So again, it's going to be a cold day. Keep those jackets handy. To Dakota. All right, Brendan, thank you so much. When we come back here on Mountain News this morning, the search for the four Americans kidnapped in Mexico is at an end, but the search for justice is only beginning.